afternoon. Uh, I just want to start out by saying that the proposed 2021 budget is disappointing and without vision. It clearly shows that Mayor Bowman and Council are uninterested and unwilling to listen to the concerns of constituents and to take the steps needed to invest in the services that constituents need most. Steps that are crucial to improving the quality of life in our city. In short, this budget tells constituents that their priorities are not valued by this current municipal government and that's a huge problem. More people participated in the budget consultations last year than have ever done so before. It is clear Winnipeggers are deep, care deeply and want to have a say in how their tax dollars are being spent. The three most important services identified were medical response, community livability, and public transit. Yet the big winners in this budget have been the roads and police. It is clear from the proposed budget that council has no desire to actually listen to the concerns of constituents and are content to stay the course with the status quo that is keeping our crime rate high, driving us further into insolvency, and to make mockeries and contemptful comments and excuse after excuse to constituents who take time out of their busy lives to come and express their concerns to you. I've consistently seen the majority of councillors when questioned about this budget dodge accountability, present misleading stats by selectively talking about the operating or the capital budgets, passing off one time provincial or federal investments as investment on behalf of the city and deflect criticisms of spending by appealing to differences in percentages rather than dollar figures. Stop manipulating the public through spin, stop claiming to hold one set of values and then voting in a way that goes totally counter to them. A $50 million grant from the province that council is directed to invest into the community services over three years is not real long-term investment on behalf of the city. Funds earmarked for transit from the federal government is not real long-term investment on behalf of the city. Stop wasting constituents' time by being deliberately deceptive. Listen to constituents who are telling you over and over again that they want long-term investment in transit, bike lanes, sidewalk clearing, libraries, the arts, trees, and other life-sustaining services, not roads and police. Throughout presentations to the police board yesterday, Councillor Mason Chambers criticized the data from the budget response survey, saying that it was not a representative sample of Winnipeggers and could not be considered statistically valid. I would ask what the point of asking the public's opinion is if council is just going to write it off as invalid if the results disagree with the status quo of funding roads and police and cutting everything else. We are seeing again and again concerned citizens take time out of their lives to do research, put together presentations, experts freely give their time and present their knowledge and council totally disregards all but the most tepid of progressive moves towards creating equity in our city. A poll from Statistics Canada published November 2020 shows that just 29% of Winnipeggers feel police ensure the safety of their citizens in the area. Councillor Maids yesterday also talked about the generational gap in the, in the perceived helpfulness or harmfulness of police as shown in a recent survey done by the city. This is backed up by an Angus Reid poll which shows that Canadians 40, uh, 45 and older are relatively uncritical of the police and that favorability among 18 to 34 year olds is considerably lower. The same poll noted that Canadians 54 years, old, years and older are far less likely to have had direct experiences with police over the past five years. Meanwhile, three quarters of 18 to 34 year olds have had interactions with police. We see here that one group's opinion is backed up by a perception, a feeling, an assumption, and the other group's opinion is backed up in large part by lived experiences. The prevailing opinion among experts, sociologists, criminal criminologists, etc., would back up the latter experience-based opinion and the facts based on extensive research that police do not create safety. If this is all not considered validated, valid data to cancel, then I don't know what could be. If you can stand to ignore this data, the overwhelming opinion of experts and the lived experience of BIPOC and poor people in your city, then it is quite clear that council is not budgeting based on evidence and they're simply making a deliberate choice to value certain lives over others. Similarly, we see council patting themselves on the back for record investment in transit, which is true, but it becomes quite embarrassing when you contrast that with the lived experience of transit users. We heard at the IRPW meeting last week stories of overcrowding, inaccessibility, and insufficient levels of service that council seems totally immune to understanding. I wonder when the last time anyone on council actually took the bus regularly from different parts of the city at different hours of the day to understand the experience of their constituents who are telling them 
that funding to transit is insufficient. The police provide little to no value to our city in any sense of the word. They show up only after danger, violence, or harm has occurred. And even then they had a only had a total clearance rate of around 30% for all crime in 2019. The police budget has grown approximately 163% since 2000, representing 26.5% of the city's total tax supported expenditures. This investment in police has not contributed to community safety. Instead, funding police services to exorbitant levels has proliferated crime by channeling needed resources away from social services and communities and continuing to further inequality. Community services and transit have consistently borne the brunt of budget cuts while police spending and wages have risen faster than inflation. It seems there are clearly two sets of rules in Winnipeg, one for police and another for all other city workers. I am aware of the Harvard Bloomberg study the EPC discussed on November 18th, November 18th. However, without actually reducing the police budget, this is putting a Band-Aid on a bullet wound. Crime does not appear in a vacuum, nor is it the result of moral failing on the part of individuals. It is the result of communities being deprived of resources, the results of people not being able to meet their basic needs. If the police continue to hoard resources granted to them by council, it's futile to simply redirect who picks up on the other end of a call for service. Similarly, we can't afford to pay for the infrastructure we have, yet council keeps pouring money into more of the same. Winnipeg is ever nearing a net financial position of negative $1 billion. At a certain point, we have to either choose to give in, go the way of Detroit and become a dead city, or listen to what constituents have been saying and begging for begging for investment in infrastructure that mode shifts us away from single passenger vehicles in a serious way. When council cuts transit service, doesn't fund snow clearing from sidewalks and chooses to not quickly build a network of protected bike lanes, we end up pushing more people to drive, which uses a lot more infrastructure than the alternatives of walking, biking and busing. Council's addiction to continually funding the things that bring the least value to our city Roads and police is literally bankrupting our city and making life worse for our city's most vulnerable. You can only blame the province and the feds for not giving the city enough money for so long. Eventually, you either have to admit that you don't care or actually listen to what constituents are saying. Defund the police, invest in long term, invest long term in transit, invest long term in active transportation, the arts, libraries, public housing and other life sustaining services that actually bring value and quality of life to our city. We're in the midst of a global pandemic, a worsening climate crisis, an economic downturn, and significant social upheaval. We're far past the time for half measures, good intentions, and empty promises. Council, as leaders in and representatives of our community, have a choice of how your legacies will be reflected on. You, can see, you keep saying that you care and appreciate our feedback, but where is the action to back that up, that appreciation? You can stay in the pockets of Manitoba heavy construction, True North and the police, dig our city further into debt, climate inaction and inequity, or you can be part of the city council that actually chose to make change for the better by investing in things that make our communities more livable and vibrant, by investing in things that are important to your constituents. I am asking the EPC to cut the police budget by 10% as posited by Councillor Rollins earlier this year as a first step to defunding and to invest those funds into community services. I'm also asking EPC implement a hiring freeze for police and not replace officers when they retire or resign. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Have a great weekend.